Last time I was in Walmart, I happened by the clearance aisle and I saw some Ferris wheel by Lion Brand yarn, which was discounted to a couple bucks, so I impulse bought it. And I didn't realize until I got home that the color of Vintage Carousel, the colorway, actually reminded me of those elementary school carpets with the clashing red and blue and green that's all just meant to sort of hide baby grime from showing up. So I did what I usually do when I have a limited quantity. I went on to Ravelry, I entered in the yarn name, I even entered in the colorway, and then I limited the search by crochet and by the amount of yardage I had. This brought up a few pages of really specific projects for inspiration, but I didn't really care for anything on the list, so instead I went to Pinterest and I just started mindlessly scrolling until I came to this bag pattern by Annabelia Handmade, and I can't speak for the pattern because I didn't use it. I looked at the picture and was like, yeah, I could probably wing it. Obviously, follow the link in the description and make your own bag if you love the way that she did it. It's actually a re really cute pattern so um, I just want to give credit to her for the inspiration on this square so I basically stole the square and I didn't really measure I used about what looked like half of the skein to make one square um, and then I used the other about half of it to make the other square and then I used what was left over to make a seam between the two, um, this edge here. And then once I had not quite enough for one more row on the edging, I seamed everything together. And then I was looking at this cheap acrylic yarn bag that I had freehanded, um, and you can kind of see the shine of the plastic fiber and that it didn't really have a lot of structure to it. Um, but I started wondering what would make something look expensive. And I have had this long-held belief that crochet items will always look more expensive and professional if you use um, fastenings, anything metal or leather or just anything that's not crochet added to a crochet project can make it look a lot more expensive or store-bought. And I wanted to challenge myself because sewing intimidates me and I have a lot of unfinished projects so I'm trying to at least push myself to learn how to actually complete projects. And I'm confident that I can do it, I just don't know how it's gonna look. But my hope is that if you've ever been intimidated by finishing stuff, by moving out of crochet, by making something that looks like the quality you'd see at a craft fair, so that maybe seeing me struggle through it and admit my mistakes and just try new stuff, maybe it'll show that it's not so scary. I just want to try. Here are some of the non-crocheted elements I'm going to use to finish the bag. Of course I have my bag, and again this could be any type of squares sewn together. I have this strap that I found at a thrift store in a little pile of just purse straps. Here's some D-rings. I actually ended up using different rings because I wanted gold ones that matched everything else. Here's some sew on snaps I found in my grandmother's sewing stuff. And a fat quarter of blue fabric from when I thought I was going to make my own shoes because I thought that was a thing I could do. And some complimentary thread. There's also this leather jacket that I got from a thrift store a long time ago and I kind of just cut it apart every time I need leather scraps for something. I'm going to use the leather scraps to hold the D-rings onto the bag. Now if you're good at sewing, you'll know that you should always iron before you measure and cut. I am not good at sewing, so I forgot to iron at this point. I also realized at this point that I wasn't going to have enough fabric to actually line my bag until I happened to look over and notice that yes, I did have a second fat quarter of the same blue fabric, at which point I could just trace around my bag and leave a little bit of seam allowance. Looking back, I wish I'd left a little bit more of a seam. 
Then I layered my two pieces of fabric together and I just did a super professional job of cutting. At this point I did remember to iron and I pretended to be the kind of housewife that actually knows how to get a seam out of a piece of fabric. And it was good enough. Now we harvest our jacket for its natural resources. And I cut out my leather strips that I was going to use to fasten the D-rings. I cut out four because I had plans to do this super fancy thing where I was going to sew some pieces together and then turn them inside out and then top stitch them. But that didn't work out. So I also forgot that I wanted a pocket on the inside of the lining. So I had to run back upstairs and cut out a vaguely pocket shaped piece of fabric. I folded the top down and then I top seamed along the pocket. You'll notice that I for some reason thought I needed two pieces of fabric to make a pocket. So I did a really nice job of sewing my pocket together and then I turned it inside out to hide the seams and I thought I had a nice little interior purse pocket. Then like a good seamstress I did some half-assed pins and about six pins too few and I sewed my pocket to the lining. Don't you just love that ugly seam there? But it was on the interior, so I figured it was okay. Maybe I should have googled how to out a pocket. Oh well. So this is the point where I actually realized that by using two pocket pieces, I had a double pocket instead of having one particularly made one. But that's okay with me because I bring my journal everywhere and having some extra space for pens actually isn't too bad of a mistake. So I again super professionally pinned my two pieces of lining fabric together and I just sewed around the perimeter. Then I turned my lining inside out to hide the seams like one typically does when they sew something and I had a brief crisis of conscience where I had to think in my head about whether this was right because my seams were hidden but my pocket was on the outside and then I remembered that this is an interior lining, the seams are supposed to be visible on the outside, the pocket goes inside, and I didn't have to redo the entire thing. Here's the part where I thought that my grandmother's old sewing machine was going to be able to manage sewing two pieces of leather together with a broken presser foot and a thin needle. The sad part is... This isn't even the first time I've broken a needle trying to sew leather with this machine. The other sad part is that I know it's not the machine's fault. It took a few failed attempts at getting that leather through the machine before I finally accepted I was just going to have to fold one piece in half and sew it by hand. Every craft I do is devoted to the memory of my beloved grandmother who we all call Nani. And Nani, I'm really sorry I put your sewing machine through this. Now I can move on to hand stitching, which is considerably less scary to me than sewing out a machine. So I folded my lining in half and lined up where I thought the middle was with a pin. I stuck the snap together to try to be extra extra sure that I was going to sew it properly and not backwards. Then I promptly sewed the snap on backwards. So I removed the backwards snap repeated my process of finding the middle again, set in a pin to mark my place, made quadruply sure that I wasn't sewing it backward again, and re-sewed on the snap. Then I was really clever and instead of measuring or anything, I just put the snap together and then marked with a pin on the other side where it lined up, and then I sewed it in there. But instead of this resulting in an expertly centered snap, what I ended up with was a closure that was terribly off-center. Then I tucked the lining into the bag and I was ready to just running stitch along the top. I placed my little folded piece of leather along the side where it was going to go. Then I remembered that I actually need to add the ring before I sew it.
Then I realized that my needle was having trouble getting through the leather, so because I don't own an awl, I decided to use a thumbtack to press through the leather to line up where my stitches were going to go. This actually almost worked, and I think if I needed an awl, I could use a thumbtack instead. But what I didn't account for was that the leather was sort of self-healing, and a few seconds after I punched the holes, I actually couldn't tell where I had punched them anyways. So I lined everything up again, and I placed in the leather pieces, folded them over, and then remembered again that I needed to add the rings before I sewed them in. I managed to shove a pin through it once to hold it in place, and then I just pinned on either side to kind of secure it down. This time, I remembered to add the ring before I placed the piece of leather into the bag. See, I am learning. Now this was a point when I didn't skimp on pinning down. Then I was able to add my thread and start sewing. So I had this idea that I was going to use a really long piece of thread and that way I wouldn't have to start and stop. This ended up costing me the most time because my thread constantly got stuck on every pin and on my rings. Since my thumbtack leather punch didn't work out so great, I actually ended up managing to sew by hand pretty easily. I used a really thin short needle with a really small eye, so it just took a little bit of wiggling and I was actually able to sew this all by hand. Which was good because I backtracked on this piece a lot. This actually is the entire support for the bag, so I knew that if I was going to really shell out for the stitching anywhere, it needed to be here. I actually forgot to sew the lining to the leather at this point, but I noticed my mistake after a couple of stitches at least, and then I was able to just sew through to the lining again and double back over it to cover what I had forgotten. The rest of it was pretty simple. I was able to just, again, do the running stitch down the other side of the bag, and I attached the leather on the other side. The second time I sewed the leather on, it was perfect. You can actually see where I got sick of trying to shove my pins back into their cute little holder, and I just started sticking them into my couch. Which again, if you remember that I was working with a really long piece of thread, it constantly got stuck on those pins, and then I would pull the thread, and it would send pins flinging across my floor. Somehow I managed to make it to the end, and I tied off my thread, and then I was pretty much done. And see what I mean about how off-center those snaps are? Oh well, we'll center them next time. I was able to just clip on the strap, and that was that. The only thing I did after this was I sewed on this cute little metal tag that said handmade, which I had found in my craft room. I love the way that the leather on the bag kind of matches the strap. And I like my double pockets. So I know I winged a lot of it and it was really simple, but this project meant a lot to me because I don't finish things very often. And being able to take sort of cheap acrylic, which yarn snobs will tell you is not what they prefer to use to make high quality things. I feel pretty good about this, so thanks for following along with my messy process, and if nothing else, I hope this made the idea of sewing and finishing things a little less scary if you're like me, and you know that you're just not confident in other areas aside from crochet. I think trying is more important than anything, and as long as we try, who knows, you might end up with something really special. Thanks again for watching.